Welcome everybody. So I've gotten a lot of requests on how to store information on the internally built SD drive in the ESP32. This is commonly referred to as SPIFFS, which is basically the memory stored into the ESP32 so that if you have a power cycle or you just don't use the application for some time powered on again, that that information stored there is stored without requiring any power. All right, so that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna just um, store some information on that device. So you can see um, how we're gonna do that. We'll have a couple of variables. We'll all combine those variables in a JSON string, and then we'll save it to a file on the uh, internal SD card. So the SPIFFS. And similarly, I'll show you then how to read from that file and interpret that JSON string so that we get back the individual variables. So let's go to the code. As usual, let's start on my repository. Um, we'll go to repositories and then select the ESP32 config file SPIFFS. Then we'll go ahead and download that so here we are, and we'll go into Arduino and then uh, ESP32 and open the INO file. Now, before you run it, let's go through the code so that you know really what it does so that you can now adapt it to the way you will need it yourself. Now, the first thing we need to do is load spiffs.h. We need that so that we can have access to that SD, built-in SD card that the ESP32 has. Then we're also going to use the Arduino JSON.h. This we use to convert the individual variables into one big long string, and that string we're then saving to the drive. Format SPIFFS, if failed, you need to um, apply true there so that might the SPIFFS not be formatted yet. Uh, and it basically fails, that then automatically it's formatted before your programs run. Now, um, the next step is that we define a file name. Uh, I call it here config file name, and we uh, set it to config.json. Uh, that's basically required, so you have the name for the file that you're going to store on the SPIFFS. Now we're going to have some variables that we want to store. This definitely will be different in your program, but here in this case, I'll just have an integer value one, integer value two, and a string called user string. It's empty at this point in time. All right, let's go to the setup. Uh, first thing we set up is the serial interface, obviously, um, at 11.52.00, um, and we state that we're going to start the demo. So we basically just print here the variables as they are per default, and then we are going to read in the data from the SPIFFS and then show that it's been changed. So here we mount the SPIFFS um, and try to read it in. Um, so the first thing you want to do there is SPIFFS.begin. It will return false if it fails. So if it fails, obviously we need to plot here, set up SPFFS mount failed. And in your code, you gotta really make sure that as soon as this fails, everything's aborted. Uh, I didn't really take care of that in this particular demo code. Now we um, just assume everything's successful. So we just plot that to the screen and then uh, we're going to read our config file. So we do that with the function read config. This is a function that I defined myself in the bottom of the code that reads in the variables that we need. And of course we need to provide it with the file name. It will return true if the configuration file is read correctly. Uh, so only in case it reads false, then it says it couldn't read the configuration file and then it tries to create a new configuration file. And that's done by running the function save config. This is also a function that's locally defined. Um, and um, then of course, finally in the setup, we print everything to the screen. Now let's have a look, see what that read config and save config really does. So let's start with save config. I'll scroll down to where that function is defined. So save config is over here. 
we start off by defining an empty JSON document. We call that document doc. This uh, document is of the length of 1024 characters. This is quite large and should be sufficient for, your, uh, for most of your applications. If you do need more, you can just increase this number. We then write the individual variables we want to store to that uh, doc file. And so here we have our integer value one and we write that to the doc file. Um, then we have value two and we have the user string. The final step is that we serialize JSON and write the file. Now, write file again is a function we defined ourselves, which you can find below here. Uh, so scrolling down a little bit, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we basically get the handle to our file and we open that file, um, then uh, write the message, basically the JSON string to that file. And finally, we close the file again. So pretty straightforward. Um, then, of course, this is a bool, so it returns true if everything's successful and it returns false, it was not. So here also a graphical representation of what's happening. We have our three different variables, value one, value two, and a user string. Here also with some examples, value one is 799, value two is 18, and the user string is string to be stored. Those three then are encapsulated to a JSON string. Then uh, the JSON string will look like this. Uh, you have this accolade open, you see value one, value two, and the user string and then it's closed again. So that's one single string that basically stores those three variables. That one string is then stored into the file config.json. In a similar way, the files are read. So we go to read config, then the first thing that we do is basically that we read the uh, file. Uh, that again is a separate function We'll briefly go to that function as well. That's over here. That's the reverse of the save file. So we get our file name. And then again, we try to open up the file. Um, we read in that um, the file text, basically the JSON string. And then finally, we return the JSON string. So let's go back to read config. And in read config, after we read in the file itself, we then ver verify briefly that the length is okay. A file can be corrupt and you may want to make sure that the length of the size is okay. So bear in mind that the second that you're going to increase the uh, length of your JSON string, you need to increase that over here as well. And in fact, I'll just make this um, uh, define in the beginning where uh, basically, the, the length of the static JSON document and the config file size is basically the same parameter. Then we create an empty JSON document just as we did before. And then we deserialize the JSON document from the file content into the static JSON document. Now, if that doesn't work, uh, we need to throw an error. But if everything works, then we can read out the individual variables now from that JSON document. And this goes in exactly the same fashion as the storing was done. The one thing that is different perhaps is that we need to make sure that the variables are interpreted correctly. You basically create a pointer to that particular variable. And because this JSON string is static, you need to create a constant integer and that points to the value one that you want to receive. Now, um, you do the same for value two and of course for your string. But our global variables, they are not constants. They are variables that you as a user can change. So that's where we need a second iteration step where the constants, the ones with the underscore in the beginning, are then written to our real variables, value one, value two, and user string. After that, we can return true. Good, with that covered, we can now go to the main loop of the program. And that's over here. And in essence, I just tried to create a simple code so that you can test yourself that your configuration file is working. 
I see that my indent is off here a little bit. Let me fix that. That's a lot better. So in essence, it checks if there's anything available on the serial port. If it is, the user string here is serial read, um, read string. So basically whatever we write in the console, we uh, store in the user string. We generate here two new variables and then we save to the configuration file. Finally, we just plot them on the screen so that you can see what has been updated. And that's it. With that, you can now create your own configuration files. So what do you need to adapt? Basically, the only thing you need to adapt is the save config file and the read config file. In the save config file, you want to add in this section all the variables you want to store. In the, in the read config file, you then need to update also all the variables over here that you want to read. And that's all you need to do. And then you can use the save config and the read config functions to basically store and retrieve all the information that you require for your code to run. So let's go ahead and run this code and I'll show you how it works. So here's our serial interface. You can see that at the moment we don't see anything. I'll just briefly reboot it. And you can see that at the moment it already has the example that we just showed on the slide before with value one, 799, value 218. And the user string is this is a stored string in JSON. Now let's go ahead and over here send something new. So something new. We now send this over to the uh, our ESP32. And as you can see, it generates a new value one, a new value two, and a user string that says something new. Now I'll go ahead and as you can see, disconnect the ESP32. Afterwards, I connect the ESP32 again. I need to briefly restart the console as that's not updating anymore. And if I now restart the ESP32, we can see the same value one, the same value two, and the user string that says something new. I hope this is insightful for you and that you can use this in your projects to store any parameters that need to survive a power cycle. Please don't forget to hit that, the subscribe button, leave your comments down below, and see you in the next video.